Section 2 of Complete Hypnotism, Mesmerism, Mind Reading, and Spiritualism. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Complete Hypnotism, Mesmerism, Mind Reading, and Spiritualism by A. Alpheus. Section 2 what is hypnotism we have seen that so far the history of hypnotism has given us two manifestations or methods that of passes and playing upon the imagination in various ways used by mesmer and that of physical means such as looking at a bright object used by braid both of these methods are still in use today and though hundreds of scientific men including physicians have studied the subject for years no essentially new principles have been discovered. Though the details of hypnotic operation have been thoroughly classified, and many minor elements of interest have been developed, all these make a body of evidence which will assist us in answering the question, what is hypnotism? Modern scientific study has pretty conclusively established the following facts. 1. Idiots, babies under three years old, and hopelessly insane people, cannot be hypnotized. 2. No one can be hypnotized unless the operator can make him concentrate his attention for a reasonable length of time. Concentration of attention, whatever the method of producing hypnotism, is absolutely necessary. 3. The persons not easily hypnotized are those said to be neurotic or those affected with hysteria. By hysteria is not meant nervous excitability, necessarily. Some very phlegmatic persons may be affected with hysteria. In medical science, hysteria is an irregular action of the nervous system. It will sometimes show itself by severe pains in the arm, when in reality there is nothing whatever to cause pain, or it will raise a swelling in the head quite without cause. It is a tendency to nervous disease, which in severe cases may lead to insanity. The word neurotic is a general term covering affection of the nervous system. It includes hysteria and much else besides. On all these points, practically every student of hypnotism is agreed. On the question as to whether anyone can produce hypnotism by pursuing the right methods, there is some disagreement, but not much. Dr. Ernest Hart, in an article in the British Medical Journal, makes the following very definite statement, representing the side of the case that maintains that anyone can produce hypnotism says he, quote, It is a common delusion that the mesmerist or hypnotizer counts for anything in the experiment. The operator, whether priest, physician, charlatan, self-deluded enthusiast, or conscience imposer, is not the source of any occult influence, does not possess any mysterious power, and plays only a very secondary and insignificant part in the chain of phenomena observed. There exist at the present time many individuals who claim for themselves, and some who make a living by so doing, a peculiar property or power as potent mesmerizers, hypnotizers, magnetizers, or electrobiologists. One even often hears it said in society, for I am sorry to say that these mischievous practices and pranks are sometimes made a society game, that such a person is a clever hypnotist, or has great mesmeric or healing power. I hope to be able to prove what I firmly hold, both from my personal experience and experiment, as I have already related in the nineteenth century, that there is no such thing as a potent mesmeric influence, no such power resonant in any one person more than another, that a glass of water, a tree, a stick, a penny post letter, or a limelight can mesmerize as effectively as can any individual. A clever hypnotizer means only a person who is acquainted with the physical or mental tricks by which the hypnotic condition is produced, or sometimes an unconscious opposer who is unaware of the very trifling part for which he is cast in the play, and who supposes himself really to possess a mysterious power which, in fact, he does not possess at all, or which, to speak more accurately, is equally possessed by every stock or stone. End quote. Against this we may place the statement of Dr. Faveau de Cormel, who speaks authoritatively for the whole modern French school. He says, quote, 
every magnetizer is aware that certain individuals never can induce sleep even in the most easily hypnotizable subjects they admit that the sympathetic fluid is necessary and that each person may eventually find his or her hypnotizer even when numerous attempts at inducing sleep have failed however this may be the impossibility some individuals find in inducing sleep in trained subjects prove at least the existence of a negative force End quote. if you would ask the present writer's opinion gathered from all the evidence before him he would say that while he has no belief in the existence of any magnetic fluid or anything that corresponds to it he thinks there can be no doubt that some people will succeed as hypnotists while some will fail just as some fail as carpenters while others succeed this is true in every walk of life it is also true that some people attract others repel the people they meet this is not very easily explained but we have all had opportunity to observe it again since concentration is the prerequisite for producing hypnotism one who has not the power of concentration himself and concentration which he can perfectly control is not likely to be able to secure it in others also since faith is a strong element a person who has not perfect self-confidence could not expect to create confidence in others while many successful hypnotizers can themselves be hypnotized it is probable that most all who have power of this kind are themselves exempt from the exercise of it it is certainly true that while a person easily hypnotized is by no means weak-minded indeed it is probable that most geniuses would be good hypnotic subjects still such persons have not a well-balanced constitution and their nerves are high-strung if not unbalanced they would be most likely to be subject to a person who had such a strong and well-balanced nervous constitution that it would be hard to hypnotize and it is always safe to say that the strong may control the weak but it is not likely that the weak will control the strong there is also another thing that must be taken into account science teaches that all matter is in vibration indeed philosophy points to the theory that matter itself is nothing more than centers of force and vibration the lowest vibration we know is that of sound then comes at an enormously higher rate heat light beginning at dark red and passing through the prismatic colors to violet which has a high vibration to the chemical rays and then the so-called x or unknown rays which have a much higher vibration still electricity is a form of vibration and according to the belief of many scientists life is a species of vibration so high that we have no possible means of measuring it as every student of science knows air appears to be the chief medium for conveying vibration of sound metal is the chief medium for conveying electric vibrations while to account for the vibrations of heat and light we have to assume or imagine an invisible imponderable ether which fills all space and has no property of matter that we can distinguish except that of conveying the vibrations of light in its various forms when we pass on to human life we have to theorize chiefly by analogy it must not be forgotten however that the existence of the ether and many assumed facts in science are only theories which have come to be generally adopted because they explain phenomena of all kinds better than any other theories which have been offered now in life as in physical science anyone who can get or has by nature the keynote of another nature has a tremendous power over that other nature following story illustrates that this power is in the physical world while we cannot vouch for the exact truth of the details of the story there can be no doubt of the accuracy of the principle on which it is based a musical genius came to the suspension bridge at niagara falls and asked permission to cross but as he had no money his request was contemptuously refused he stepped away from the entrance and drawing his violin from his case began sounding notes up and down the scale he finally discovered by the thrill that sent a tremor through the mighty structure that he had found the note on which the great cable that upheld the mass was keyed he drew his bow across the string of the violin again and the colossal wire as if under a spell of a magician responded with a throb that sent a wave through its enormous length he sounded the note again and again 
and the cable that was dormant under the strain of loaded teams and monster engines, the cable that remained stolid under the pressure of human traffic and the heavy thread of commerce, thrilled and surged and shook itself as mad waves of vibration coursed over its length, and it tore at its slack until, like a foam-crested wave of the sea, it shook the towers at either end, or, like some sentient animal, it tugged at its fetters and longed to be free. The officers in charge, apprehensive of danger, hurried the poor musician across, and bade him be gone and trouble them no more. The ragged genius, putting his well-worn instrument back in its case, muttered to himself, I'd rather cross free or torn down the bridge. So the hypnotist, goes on the writer from which the above is quoted, finds the note on which the subjective side of the person is attuned, and by playing upon it, awakens into activity emotions and sensibilities that otherwise would have remained dormant, unused, and even unsuspected, end quote. No student of science will deny the truth of these statements. At the same time, it has been demonstrated again and again that persons can and do frequently hypnotize themselves. This is what Mr. Hart meant when he says that any stick or stone may produce hypnotism. If a person will gaze steadily at a bright fire, or a glass of water, for instance, he can throw himself into a hypnotic trance exactly similar to the condition produced by a professional or trained hypnotist. Such people, however, must be possessed of imagination. End of section 2 Recording by Maya Klein